So the next thing I'd like to encourage you to think about is looking at your risk and protective factors in Section 5. This starts on page 48 in the Anytown report. And what you'll see is that the risk and protective factors are charted out separately. And they list first, there's graphs of the protective factors first, and then the risk factors next. So this is section five that has your risk and protective factor data. This first graph shows you a list of each of your protective factors and where you score on, on them com compared to the, the norm of 50. So the score of 50 essentially means that 50% of the respondents reported lower than you and 50% re responded higher. So when you're looking at these data, one of the ways that you want to look at them is to compare your, your score against this score of 50. So in thinking this through, one of the things you want to look at is well, where am I, let's take the risk factor scale, this second graph, graph four, where are our numbers spiking over this 50? So in the case of risk factors, higher numbers are worse. You could almost think of risk factors as like debt, whereas protective factors are more like cash. So you don't want high risk numbers. So going back to seeing any highs or lows, what we'd like to recommend is that you look for the three highest and three lowest scoring risk and protective factors, just to get a sense of what, what are, what's going on in your data, what's going on in your community. When you identify those three highest and three lowest, you want to ask yourself questions you know, are these risk and protective factors grouping in the same or similar domains? Are they all showing up in something like family and peers? Are, are, are we having strengths that group in families or in the school? And another thing to think about when you're looking at these highs and lows is can, are they in areas that can actually be addressed by the efforts of your community or organization? In some cases, you have to skip over the highest and identify you know, where, where can we best direct our efforts? And so I have a graph that represents the data we were just looking at, makes it a little bit easier to identify what's going on here. So these bar graphs are in relation to the Pennsylvania statewide data. And you can see these are our four highest risk factors, and they're still sort of spiking over the statewide sample. Okay, so next, we want to talk about changes over time. Start with those risk and protective factors and, and keep following those as you're thinking through your data. So now we're pulling them forward and we're saying, okay, so of, of our highest and lowest uh, risk and protective factors, are we seeing any increases over time, any decreases over time? Are there cases of no change? What's most noteworthy? And this is really relevant, obviously, or if you have participated in the PAYS for more than one year, and one of the real benefits to your community and school for participating in multiple years is that then you can start getting some trend data uh, in your area. So here we have a chart of um, eighth graders report of their past 30 days use of alcohol from 2003 to 2011. And all these data are sample data that are pulled from the Anytown report, which is also just example data. So you can see we have a pretty interesting trend over time for eighth graders. There's sort of at 15%, they hang there for a little while, they drop down to 10%, which is like, hooray, that's awesome. And then in 2011, we see this huge spike. So this is something really useful to think about is just looking at these changes over time. And then this also, this kind of data can also help you think about, okay, so what do we need to think about our incoming freshman class? Moving on uh, to looking for meaningful groups of information, I have a picture here that's of a variety of fruits and vegetables. So I have potatoes, tomatoes, bananas, oranges, apples, and mushrooms. So we can think about, well, is it meaningful to have what percent of each individual type of fruit and vegetables there, or is it more meaningful to say, I have X percent of vegetables and X percent of fruit? So this is kind of the general idea that I'm going with here, is that you want to look for groups that have similar pieces of information. So like risk and protective factors might 
uh, might cluster in comparable domains, family and peers. So these are more individual units that you can reach out to, whereas community and school might be something that are domains that are more easily affected through policy. You might also consider similar issues. So in the protective factors, the pro-social opportunities, there are items for that in family, school, and community. And Brittany was just showed me a note to remind everyone that a lot of this information is in the Understanding Your Pays data. This is all coming from that Pays guide. That's a separate document that you can have and just sort of keep tucked in with your Pays report to help you uh, remember that. Yeah, and there's that reference at the bottom of the of the slide as well to help you remember where to go. Another way to think about similar groups of information is, for example, bullying, where we have uh, the bullying section has eight individual items that can actually be grouped into three different groups. Uh, physical bullying, um, so that's going to be threats and that kind of thing. Relational bullying, which is spreading rumors or telling lies. And technology bullying, where the, the bullying happens through the Internet or that kind of thing. So if you group those into, uh, you take those items and condense them into smaller groups, you can present data that's a little bit more easy for your audience to absorb. Similarly with ATOD use, you can you know, group them into groups of maybe it's gateway drugs or maybe you're really interested in methamphetamine use. So you just have to think thoughtfully through what makes sense to pull together as a group. And I think that's the, the, the key thing here is your groups need to make sense. So if you're not sure if they make sense, definitely check in with somebody else. Ask two or three other people that you, you trust and think have good insight do these groups make sense? So I have one example of this, which is the bullying example. Here you can see those, those eight items condensed into three groups. And what's interesting to me here in these data is that for each grade, there is a different spike of bullying issues. So in sixth grade, the biggest issue is the physical bullying. In eighth grade, the biggest issue is the relational bullying. In 10th grade, it's the internet. So you know, instead of presenting the percentages across all the grades for eight items to somebody, you can think about consolidating it, presenting it this way. It's a little bit easier. Lastly, we have comparisons. This is really just looking at your Anytown report and comparing your local pays data with either the Pennsylvania statewide sample, and those averages are in all of the graphs and uh, charts. And you can also compare them to the national norms on the risk and protective factors, which is that score of 50 we talk about. So here we have, again, data pulled from the Anytown report. These are the protective factors related to pro-social involvement. And you can see that Anytown is doing a great job on their school-level protective factors for pro-social involvement, whereas the family, family pro-social stuff is... No, it's on average with the state, and it's still not bad. It's not lower than 50, but we really see a lot of strengths here in the school. 